Fallen Crown. I want to start off by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh by Shimei Yahusha by Shimei Kakavashla when I'm young. I want to give double honors to my elders and apostles of the Great Millstone for teaching me sound doctrine. I want to give double honors, you know, to those men, man, you know, that's teaching in sincerity, right? I want to give um, a strong shalom to you men and women out there doing this work diligently and chiefly keeping the faith, making your calling and your election sure. Shalom. We're going to get right into it. Hopefully this is edifying. Um, what's on my spirit right now is to talk about how the crown has fallen from our heads, man. Right? How we were the true kings and princesses on this earth, but through our iniquities and through our sins, we have rejected by our God. We have been rejected by our God. So lucky. Like through our um, constant rejection, through our constant rejecting of Yahweh Hashem the the crown has fallen from our head, man. Right? It was given over to the hands of the wicked. The earth was given into the hands of the wicked, man. Job chapter 9, verse 24. Close on my spirit to go through precepts showing how the crown has fallen from our head. Hopefully, you know, this is edifying, man. It's a vexing situation that we are in. But just know that the Lord is going to deliver us from it. So let's get into some precepts here, man. Right? Lamentations chapter 5 and verse 15. We're going to start with, right? Through precepts we get understanding. Therefore, we hate every false way. Everything in the scriptures was written for our learning. So let's learn, man. Lamentations chapter 5 and verse 15. It says, The joy of our heart is ceased. Our dance is turned into mourning. We know that the heart, the organ that's inside of your chest, it only pumps blood. Right? It doesn't think any thoughts or anything like that. It doesn't feel the uh, emotion of being joyful. Right? Only the mind goes through that. Through your mind, you experience being joyful and you experience the other emotions too as well through your mind, not the organ of your chest. So right here in Lamentations 5 and 15, it says, The joy of our heart has ceased. Our dance has turned into mourning. Right? Our dance has turned into mourning. Our mind is what? Our mind is actually um, crying right now because of the position that we are in, man. Right? For the things that our people are going through, the things that our people have seen. We are mourning, man. Instead of dancing in joy, we are crying and mourning, man. Lamentations chapter 5, verse 16, it says, The crown is falling from our head. Woe unto us that we have sinned. So this is the precept here. This is the verse here that actually inspired the lesson. Right? The water to Yahweh for giving me this spirit to do this lesson. Right? For reading this verse. Lamentation chapter 5 verse 16. The crown is falling from our head. W-O-E meaning destruction. Woe unto us. Destruction unto us. That we have sinned, man. The crown is falling from our head, right? With our Lord, with our power, we were kings and princesses on the earth. But now without our power, because we have sinned against our Lord, now destruction is unto us. Now our crown is falling from our head, man. You know, the fallen crown. Our crown is broken, man. Right? Lamentations chapter 5, verse 17. For this our heart, meaning our mind, is faint. For these things, our eyes are dim, man. Verse 18, it says, Because of the mountain of Zion, which is desolate, the foxes walk upon it, man. Look around the, look around the world right now and see. Zion is desolate, man. The so-called black Native American and Hispanics, they are desolate. The majority of them are looking for looking to a nation that cannot save them, man. Right? We got these all these wise all these wise, slithery foxes, man, taking taking merchandise, for, making merchandise of our people, you know, taking advantage of our people, man, right? This is talking about a fox characteristic, man. 
all these uh, wise, um, wise of these people, right? The wise of their nations, they know who we are, right? The top, the top people of their nations, they know who we are. They are the wise foxes, man. They trample over us through all these captivities that we have been through. They have trampled and walk upon us, man, and and we are desolate as at this day, right? You understand? You have to realize, man, that the Lord has took our crown from us, man. Let's go to Job chapter 9 real quick. I mean, Job chapter 19. So look here. Job 19. Job 19 and verse 9, it says. Let me highlight it. We're going to read the verse 10. I mean, we're going to read the verse 11. It says, Job 19 and verse 9, it says, He hath stripped me of my glory and taken the crown from my head. Now, this is Job. But we know in the spirit, Job represents Israel, man. Right? We got to go through all the turmoil and all the uh, pain and, and um, you know, temptation that the Lord will bestow upon us. So we can, and then we'll, once we endure to the end, we shall be blessed. We shall overcome, man. And that's what happened to Job. Right? He endured and was afflicted. But in the end, he overcame. And that's Israel, right? That's Israel in the end. We shall be inflicted over and over again. The scripture says, through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of heaven. The scripture says over in Matthew 24, 13, for those who endure into the end, the same shall be saved, man. Right? right? The scriptures tell you in Sirach chapter uh, 2 and verse 1, when you come into this walk, prepare your soul for temptation, man. Right? Right? Right. But going back here, the Lord has did what stripped. He stripped us of our glory and taken the crown from our head, man. You know, Job represents Israel. Job represents us. You understand? He's part of the righteous, man. Job chapter 19 and verse 9. He have stripped me of my glory and taken the crown from my head. Verse 10. He have destroyed me on every side and I am gone. And my hope have he removed like a tree. Verse 11, he hath also kindled his wrath against me, and he counted me unto him as one of his enemies, man. Our people, two-thirds of our people, have become the enemy of Yahabah Shem Yahweh man. Have become the enemy of his people, right? These other nations are his natural enemies, but our people have become his enemies too as well. The ones who persecuted Yahweh gave him over to the pilot. You all shall pay, man. The ones who constantly don't want to hear his word. The scriptures tell you that if if they believed the Yahweh's word, they will believe our word also because we're one and the same. The servant is not greater than his master, man. Right. But our Lord, you kindle this wrath against us because we have sinned, the destruction to us because we have sinned. Now he counted us one of his enemies. You understand? He counted us one of his enemies. He stripped our glory. And took an, and I, it took our crowns from our head, man. Our crown is falling, bro. The crown is falling. What more can we say? Right? We're in this position right now. We are servants, man, to another nation that is less than us. Right? And this is fools. Man. This is foolery, man. You understand? This is crazy. This is madness, man. We are in captivity. We're in bondage. And the Lord told us this over in Deuteronomy chapter 28, man. Let's get it. Didn't he tell us this over in Deuteronomy chapter 28? Deuteronomy 28 and verse 47. Let's get it. It says, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. So lucky I'm going to start again. It says Deuteronomy 28 and 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in one of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee, man. Right? So this is the Lord showing you how he did what? How he caused our crowns to fall, man. Right? How he stripped us of our glory. He gave us into another nation, man. We don't have to worry about where these enemies come from. The Lord tell you here that he the one that sent these enemies against you. He the one that sent our enemies against us in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in one of all things, man. 
You understand? Because what? Because we serve as not our Lord with, glad, with gladness and with the abundance of, of all things. <clears throat> so he said, okay, go serve your enemies. You don't want to serve me, serve your enemies. You understand? As a people, we're going to serve, in, we're going to serve one. We're either going to serve wickedness or we're going to serve righteousness. Righteousness as a people. That's the that's the Lord. That's what the Lord bestowed upon us as a nation, right? But in the end, you're gonna serve somebody. You better serve your Habashim Yahushai instead of serving serving Hashatan and his minions, man. You understand? But the Lord put us in this position because we have sinned. Because the because we have made the decision to disobey our power, disobey our God, man. You understand? Let's get Ecclesiastes 10. In verse um, 7, right? Ecclesiastes 10 and 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 7 says, I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. See? Right here. Right? You Back in the old times, what? You see servants upon horses. The real servants, right? They upon the horses making sure we pick the cotton. They upon the horses making sure we pick the sugar cane and all these other different uh, plantations that they had us, uh, you know, picking up all these different resources from. The, this, that's the, the real servant was upon the horse. Right. The real servants was upon the horse. And the princes was walking as servants upon the earth, man. That's what you see right now. Princes walking as servants upon the earth. Everywhere you look, the four corners of the earth. The real servants are in high stature and the princes are on the earth walking as servants, man. But we will change, man. The Lord said in the land of our captivity, we will remember ourselves. Just because the crown has fallen from our head doesn't mean it's still not our crown, man. Doesn't mean it's not our crown. We can pick that crown up and that's what the Lord going to do. The Lord is going to pick up that crown for us in the near future, man. Right. We are still princes, even though we walk in that service upon the earth. We are still princes, man. We are still Yasharala, princes of power. Just because our power have left us doesn't mean that we are not princes, man. You understand? Once we get our power back, then we will be princes of power again, man. Right now, we are just princes walking as service upon the earth. Our crown is on the ground right now, but the Lord is picking it up slowly but surely, giving us our crown, man. Baruch chapter 2 and verse 30 lets you know that in the land of our captivity, we shall remember ourselves, man. So what do that mean? That means that the princes in the land of their captivity, the princes will pick up their crowns again. Right? Pick up their crowns again. Let's get Baruch chapter 2 and verse 30. <coughs> it says, For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves, right? We shall remember ourselves, princes, princesses, kings, right? The Lord is slowly but surely giving us our crown back through this much affliction, through this much judgment. We're getting our crowns back, man. You understand? The Lord knows that we are a stiff-necked people, right? But the Lord knows that his, his covenant, his laws, his statutes, the people that want to serve him wholeheartedly, they are only found in Israel, man. Not amongst these other nations. You understand? So that's why he constantly deal with us. And he said right here in the land of our captivities, we shall remember ourselves. So the princes that are walking upon the earth right now as servants, you shall remember yourself, prince. Right? In the land of your captivity. Baruch chapter 2 and verse 31. It says, And shall know that I am the Lord their God, for I will give them an heart and ears to hear, man. Verse 32, it says, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. Verse 33, and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sinned before the Lord. Right. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're remembering the path of the princes, the path of the kings, the way of our forefathers, man, the true kings of the earth. Right. That's what we're remembering, because sin is the one that got sin is what got us in darkness. But through this light, right, we can see now, right. Through the light, we can see. Through the word, we can see, man. And that's your Howard shot, man. But we can see He shined that light for us by dying for our sins, right. 
by conquering death, man. Baruch chapter 2 and verse 34. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers. Here they go. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they shall be lords of it. And I will increase them. And they shall not be diminished. Man, call her a lion. Baruch chapter 2 and verse 35. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God. Right? And they shall be my people. I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. Man, this is future prophecy, right? This is what's taking place right now and what's going to happen in the near future. So, so live it up, the wicked, right? But the righteous hold on, endure this refining process. Because in the end, we shall be gold, man. Hopefully, I'm a part of that number. Hopefully, I'm a part of that number. I'm big and I'm a part of that number, man. But I know one thing, in the land of my captivity, the Lord has woken me up, right? So that's got to stand for something, man, right? The Lord, it, that's got to stand for something. Out of everybody on this earth, the Lord is waking me up and a member and, and uh, several different members and uh, brothers around the world, man. That's a part of this truth. That's a part of this one knowledge, man, that's been with your house shot from the beginning, right? Hopefully, I'm a part of that number, man. But the Lord is waking the men up and they're realizing who they are. All the prophets of old coming back to their lot, man, realizing who they are. Right. That's what the Lord is doing in the land of our captivities. He put us here to be that beacon of light across the earth. That's why he said what? That the kingdom of heaven is within you. They ain't going to be able to say low here, low there. Right. It's all a strategic plan. The Lord did what? Scattered us throughout the four corners of the earth to do what? To be a beacon to all the four corners of the earth, man. You understand? So the so the truth can be spread to the four corners of the earth. The ones who he wake up in the land of their captivity, they shall be the light to all the people that hear this knowledge on the four corners of the earth. But the ones who don't, then guess what? The ones who don't want to hear the knowledge, you shall be damned, man. You shall be, you shall hear a voice behind you saying, I told you so. A voice in your mind saying, I told you so, man. And don't be that person, man. Repent and keep the commandments to the best of your ability, right? Let's get some more precepts real quick. The Lord is going to save his elect regardless, right? Let's get Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13, and we can start at verse 19. It says, For in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. Man, the time of Jacob's trouble is coming up, coming up. The nuclear missile fire, that's coming up. The mark of the beast, concentration camps. Man, a whole bunch of destruction is coming up, which was never on this earth before. Now it's coming, right? The Lord said this. It shall, those, it, for in those days, right, Mark 13 and 19, for in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of the creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be, man. Right? That destruction is coming. But the elect shall be saved, man. Mark chapter 13, verse 20. And except that the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh shall be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. That's why you see when you wake up, it says you'll wake up at 9 o'clock and before you know it, it's 10 o'clock p.m., right? Or you'll wake up and it's 9 o'clock and before you know it, it's 5 o'clock p.m. That's the Lord shortening the days for the elect's sake, man, right? So the elect cannot be deceived, right? And that's what we hope for. That's what I pray for, right? As a hopeful elect. I want the days to be shortened because guess why? That's going to be less sin that I can commit. You understand? Less sin. The more the hours fly and the more I'm occupied in scripture, occupied in deep thought, you understand? Occupied in uh, staying in the house. That's, the less, that's less sin I do, man. You understand? Getting closer and closer to your high body shooting your shot. You have to prepare. You have to watch. You have to pray and constantly repent, man. You understand? Do this work. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You understand? Because affliction is coming. Destruction is coming. And it's, it's, it's never... And you cannot put his match. When those nuclear missile fires... When those nuclear missile fires take place, man... You cannot match this destruction to any other destruction in the past history. You understand? This is going to be new. And it's going to burn... Right? It's going to burn, man. 
So call her Lion La Abinawi Yahweh by Hashem Hamashiach or Malaki Yahusha, man, for the days being shortened for the elect's sake, man. You understand? Because because the elect are gonna get their crowns. You understand the fallen crowns that you see now, the fallen princes that's walking on the earth right now as servants, they shall get their crowns back, man. You understand? All Israel shall be saved in the end, but this first time, the elect shall get their crowns, man. Let's get it in Second Ezra chapter two and verse forty-two, man. And we're gonna wrap it up with these these precepts here. Second Ezra chapter two and verse forty-two, right? It says, and we're going to read to verse 48. 2 Ezra chapter 2 and verse 42, it says, I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with song, right? Verse 43, and in the midst of them, there was a young man of high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns, and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. That young man uh, in high stature, that's talking about Yahweh Shah, man, placing the crowns on the head of the elect. You understand? Second Ezra chapter 2 and verse 43. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly, man. Right? Verse 44, Second Ezra 2 and 44. So I asked the angel and it said, Sir, what are these? Hang on the explanation. Watch this. Second Ezra 2 and verse 45. He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of power, right? The name of Yahweh. Now are they crowned and receive palms, man. So so we will so Yahweh by Shem Yahushah will pick those crowns up, those crowns that were once fallen, and put on top of our heads, man. Our crown shall be placed back on our head by a young man high in stature. And that's Yahushah, man. You understand? So the the crowns that are fallen shall be picked up. Yahshua Rala endure until the end, man. Second Ezra chapter 2 and verse 46, it says, Then said I unto the angel, what young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them uh, palms in their hands? Verse 47. So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of God, whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Verse 48. Then the angels said unto me, Go thy way and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord thy God that thou hast seen. So that's what I'm doing right now, man. You got to envision these things, right? I've, I've seen this, right? From reading these words, I've envisioned this in my mind, man. I've, I see this, right? And I'm doing what the brother Ezra told me to do. I'm doing what the angel told uh, brother Ezra to do, should I say, say, uh, should I, should I say, right? The, the angel told Ezra to do it and it's written for our learning. We're telling you to do it right now. Right. If you read this, you need to be telling the people that this is coming to fruition, man. You need to be telling the people that they have to stand boldly and stand stiffly for the name of our Lord. Right. That they should not fall and cower and be faint hearted. You understand? The Lord told you if you are woe be unto them that are faint hearted, man. If you do not believe that you should that you will be defended, then you will not be defended. It's just that simple, man. You have to have faith in this thing. You have to do the work. Repent and chiefly keep the faith, man. Hopefully this was edifying. You understand? The crowns will be put back on our head, put back on our head. Right now, we have a fallen crown. Us as a nation, our crown is on the ground. And you know what I'm saying? Slowly but surely, we're getting close to it. We're getting close to it and we're going to eventually pick it up, right? And, and, and we're going to wear our crowns forever, even forever and ever, man. You understand? Hopefully this was edifying. I want to end it by giving all honor and glory once again to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah by Hashem Rechakadash Lai when I'm young. Yahweh being the name of who the world ignorantly calling called God. Uh, Yahweh Shah being the name of who they ignorantly calls Jesus. You understand? I want to give double honors once again to my elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me sound doctrine and, uh, you know, for them teaching in sincerity. Strong shout out to you men and women out there doing this work diligently and chiefly keeping the faith. 
making your calling and your election sure. Strong shall on to you all. Know that through much affliction, we must enter into the kingdom of heaven. Right? Shalom, Mr. Rana. On to the next one.